very lucky to have the editor of Wellesley Weston Magazine on our show. Welcome, Jill Nielsen, to the show. We're very happy to have you here today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to start by asking you to tell us about how you grew up and where you grew up. Well, I grew up in Ohio, in a suburb of Cleveland. Um, I lived there with my parents and my brother and my little poodle, Christy, until I went to college at uh, Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. So I'm pretty much Ohio through and through. <laughs> and uh, did you always know um, what you wanted to do as an adult or when you grew up? I think up? so. You know, growing up, I always loved English. I loved reading books. I read, started reading at a very early age. I'd go to the library with my mom. And, and uh, then in when I think it was fourth grade, um, the fire department had an a, uh, essay write, writing contest. And I won. Oh, nice. So I said, I think I, I think I might be a writer when I grow up. So that's kind of when it, when it all started. Do you remember what you wrote the essay on? It was just <laughs> how to prevent fires in your home. <laughs> something. Awesome. Yeah. So, so out of all the places that you've worked um, before Wellesley Weston, so which, which did you enjoy the most? Well, my background really was advertising. And I went to um, Miami, and I studied communications mm -hmm. and journalism. And I wanted to be in advertising. I think. Probably from you know watching television and movies, advertising seemed like a glamorous place to be and a place where I could use my skills as a writer and communicator. Um, but at the time, and still today, jobs in advertising were very, very difficult to get. Um, so I didn't get a job in advertising right away. Um, but after working for one year, I was doing fundraising um, for the March of Dimes, mm -hmm. and I um, there's an ad in the paper for an administrative assistant for the general manager of an ad agency in Cleveland, and I applied for it. And it was just a, you know, it's a secretarial job, but it was a great job because it got me in the door and it gave me exposure to all the different um, aspects of working mm -hmm. in an ad agency mm -hmm. because he was a general manager and he was also the creative director. Mm -hmm. So when assignments would come in, one of my jobs was to type them up or you know get them into form before he would mm -hmm. read them and I would just start doing the assignments on my own my own way of doing them and then after about six months I got the nerve to kind of show you know what I had done mm -hmm. and um, he had some suggestions that this is this is really right. really good so I think that's probably my favorite job just because it was my um, it was it was the, the door opened at mm -hmm. that point and mm -hmm. it kind of I had an epiphany about I want to be a writer and I'm pretty good at writing right. commercials right. so that's that's kind of where it started um, but then my second job as a copywriter um, well actually the second job was probably my favorite yeah because that's when I really had autonomy and yeah. I could I could go and and um, and had some great clients mm -hmm. that I worked with, mm -hmm. so that was probably my favorite job. Do you have like a favorite story from one of your clients that you had fun with? Oh goodness! That you might want to share, like someone you might have done a special ad or campaign for that sticks out in your memory. Well, I I did write um, a jingle for Schwabel's Bread Company, which okay. is they still play oh, nice. um, to this day, and the person who wrote the music. Um, actually, he went on and became pretty famous. His name is Jim Brickman, huh. and um, he wrote. The, and he had he had a jingle writing um, yeah. company at the time. So I wrote the words, and, oh, and nice. he wrote the music. And he awesome. went on to um, you know he has concerts and yeah. and, uh, and oh, here neat. I neat <laughs> neat awesome. Um, so you've been um, at Wellesley Weston since about 2005. Yes. So it's basically since it started. I came in um, after the second issue was completed, so the third issue was my first one. Oh, excellent! So, did yeah. you um, have a hand at designing it, or because you've been you've been um, with it right from almost the start? Yeah, pretty much. Um, the t everything was pretty much decided when I when I came mm -hmm. in. Um, but I've you know things have changed over time. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, um, the departments were already in place, and we we work with a. Um, advertising agency in Connecticut called ImageMark mm -hmm. and they um, helped Beth Furman the publisher come up with the look of the magazine mm -hmm. so the type um, the typeface of uh, the cover mm -hmm. um, the departments how they're all laid out that was pretty much already decided when when I came on board Oh, neat um, and um, have you noticed that there's been um, a lot of uh, changes between when you first started to to date um, or is it about the I same? I wouldn't say a lot, but, but we've tweaked it yeah. over the years. We've added um, some departments. We've right. taken away some. 
Um, for example, the inbox section, which is in the front of the magazine, um, that's, that's a few years old, maybe four years old. Um, and, and we started that because there was, we were getting so much um, input from mm -hmm. the business community mm -hmm. about things that were going on mm -hmm. and, and news items. So we came up with mm -hmm. that as a way to um, publicize those events. Right. And that's become very popular. That's grown from one page to, you know, we really have to, right. to limit it because right. so many people want to. Right. So you, you feel that it's that. also gotten bigger. Ab oh, absolutely. Since you've since yeah. you've been at it, yeah. Um, is that is that because um, there are a lot more businesses you think in Wellesley that have popped up over the last several um, years? Or? Well, I, I think what's happened is now that the magazine has um, has caught on, mm -hmm. and people realize that it's a, a good vehicle for mm -hmm. advertising their business. Right. Right. Um, Everyone wants to be yeah. in it, and, and <laughs> so it's great. Who does the cover art for it? I always love the the cover art on each issue that comes out. So, so that's a gentleman named Peter Baker, huh? and he has a photography studio in Connecticut, nice. and he does all of our cover art awesome. for us. And he comes up here, and I I help him um, find cover models mm -hmm. and locations yeah. and things that we want to um, right. put on the cover. Oh, nice. And and um, Beth Furman works works yeah. with him yeah. on that as well. It's, um, it's interesting because I was looking at the, the web page for the magazine and I yeah. see that there's all these sections. Um, and I wrote down a few. There's About Town, there's the blog, the editorial, local links. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, um, my goodness, that, that Jill, she's very busy. Oh. She does all <laughs> these sections. She must be up till 4 in the morning. Well. So now you have, to, you, so you have to tell us how do you do it? How do you like uh, do all those sections and, and oversee everything? And Well... You know, it just all kind of comes together. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and we've been doing it for so long that right. um, it pretty much is down to a science. Mm -hmm. I mean, some times are busier than others. Um, it's very busy when we come up with the lineup for the next issue. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, right now, all the stories for the spring issue, mm -hmm. and here it is, December, right. what is it, third or whatever, right. the spring issue are coming in to me now, right. and that issue won't even be published until mid-February. Right. Right. Um, so it kind of goes in cycles. So you'll have, you know, have a few weeks mm -hmm. where things are pretty quiet, mm -hmm. and then things get busy right. again, and things get really busy, think, and then yeah. it kind of um, right. settles down a little bit. And do you have a, a crew that helps you um, put together some of the stuff, the editorials, the blog? The blog, um, Actually, we have somebody who um, takes the information that we get from mm -hmm. the community and posts it on our blog mm -hmm. and on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. and, and those are a couple of things that have really, I would say in the last three years, mm -hmm. have taken on a life of their own. Mm -hmm. It's the blog and the Facebook, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, all of those social media um, mm -hmm. Me vehicles, right. if you will, right. um, are are something that are new to right. us. And, and you would write the majority of the articles that go in the editorial section? Um, well, no, I, I write the editor's letter, mm -hmm. um, but the um, the other articles are all written by freelance okay. writers that, that we hire. Mm -hmm. oh. so, many of them local people, um, some of them are just are professional writers who mm -hmm. um, have been with a magazine since its inception. Uh -huh. But as time goes by, I think more and more of our writers yeah. are, are people who live in Wellesley and, and Weston yeah. and, and have expressed an interest First. in contributing. Oh. Awesome. And so, um, do you plan to add new sections to the magazine? Are the upcoming, you know, year next year? Do you have any ideas for adding on? Well, you know, we're always, um, always thinking, always mm -hmm. thinking about new ideas. Right. And for example, um, about town, which is the um, department in the back of the magazine, which um, is the pictures of people attending events. Mm -hmm. That was an add-on because. Um, we were getting all kinds of pictures from events, and yeah. so we kind of just answer whatever the call is in the community. Mm -hmm. um, one uh, department that we did add beginning in the um, with this fall this fall issue this last fall mm -hmm. was a fashion section. Mm -hmm. Um, we'd never really done a fashion section mm -hmm. per se. We'd done fashion articles, uh -huh. but we did a, a fashion department, and then we did it again in the winter uh -huh. issue with um, st a style guide for mm -hmm. holiday shopping. Oh, nice! And that was very well received. Yeah. And that's just another way for our advertisers to display yeah. their products and encourage people to shop locally. Right. right, and and you know you could also take pictures of local Wellesley moms. Because they're some of the most fashionable Wellesley well, you know, moms that are walking you know, around town here. You, you, I've actually had a couple of people who have sent in right. um, saying you should go to Roach Brothers right. and, and take it's pictures of here how well Street. dressed the Wellesley That's moms right. are. <laughs> so, um, would you? So, let me ask you this question: What would you consider your dream job? 
Well, if you had to choose from any job out there. Oh, goodness. Well, if you asked me 15 years ago, I would have said I would like to be the creative director of a major ad agency uh -huh. or, you know, the next Katie Couric. <laughs> But, I think you'd make a great um, Katie Couric. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Um, but now, um, this is kind of a dream job, actually. Yeah. I mean, I, I work from a home office. Mm -hmm. um, I get to meet exciting people mm -hmm. every day. I get to learn something new every day mm -hmm. because there's always new information mm -hmm. that, that is brought to my attention. Mm -hmm. um, and it's flexible. Mm -hmm. so, so this is pretty much a dream job. I'd also love to, to be a travel writer, I think, because mm -hmm. my husband and I love to travel. Yeah. And I would love to have an excuse to do nothing but travel right. and then just write about it. Yeah. But, of course, that would require a magazine paying yeah. for all my travel expenses. Yeah. So I don't know if that's going to happen. Right. Um, so if, if, for example, um, if, you, if you had a high school student who approached you and said they'd really want to do some freelance writing for you. Is mm -hmm. that an option at the magazine? Sure. I mean, we've had, um, we've had Wellesley College students uh -huh. write articles for us before. Um, we've had, I had a Wellesley High School student who did some proofreading and, um, and copy editing for mm -hmm. me as a summer job, mm -hmm. you know, as, as an unpaid internship. Mm -hmm. um, but we always welcome. One, one, one year, a uh, Wellesley girl felt very strongly um, about the Darfur cause mm -hmm. and she wrote an article in our forum department which mm -hmm. is an op-ed section mm -hmm. and it was it was very well written and, yeah. and very well received uh -huh. so things like that yeah. Um, we yeah. absolutely I mean I always yeah. encourage people to yeah send me something and yeah we'll, we'll talk about it awesome um, so if, if you had to offer advice for uh, a Wellesley High School student or a Wellesley College gal mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to follow in your footsteps what would you tell them? <laughs> well, I, I think first of all, I'd say read, read, read. Read as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. Read books, read newspapers, read magazines, mm -hmm. read all kinds of things. Read things that you normally wouldn't even consider picking up. Right. If you've never read science fiction, read a science fiction book. Because that's how you learn different mm -hmm. styles of writing. Mm -hmm. That's where you see where maybe where your style fits in mm -hmm. to, um, to a publication. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are saying, you know, print media is dead, and you know, mm -hmm. newspapers are closing, right. magazines are, but right. you know, that's it's still pretty right. strong. Yeah. And how how do you um, how do you feel about that tussle between um, all those people self-publishing and all those other people going the traditional route? What are your What are your thoughts on it? Well, I mean, I, th I think for a magazine like ours, mm -hmm. which is something that you know sits on your coffee table, it's beautiful to look mm -hmm. at. You're at the dentist office. I mean, certain things just can't be appreciated mm -hmm. on, in a tablet, a, right. in an electronic tablet. Right. You have to right. really pick it up. You have to you appreciate feel the, feel the, pages. the pages. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's, right. there's just something about it that I think magazines like Wellesley Weston mm -hmm. are, are here to stay. And, mm -hmm. and um, we, but we do have the online version for people who, mm -hmm. um, who prefer to read electronically. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, I don't think print media is is, right. is dead by any stretch right. of the imagination. So. Um, so let me ask you one more question. So mm -hmm. if you had to offer advice to a Wellesley mom who wanted to get into the field of journalism, um, how would you suggest she begin her journey? Well, I think, um, you know, a couple of my friends have joined uh, writing groups, mm -hmm. which I think is was wonderful. It's a wonderful way to meet other writers mm -hmm. and to kind of hone your craft and mm -hmm. see, you know, how you can improve. Um, also, you know, send send samples of your work out to send samples to me. Send it to other publications. I mean, mm -hmm. don't be shy. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I had a friend who was um, published in um, I think it was Ladies Home Journal mm -hmm. about a, a journey that she'd had that mm -hmm. she wrote about, mm -hmm. and they published it. Right. See, you just it's almost like you know if you never know. It's mm -hmm. it's a lot of it's a timing thing. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm looking for an article on. Um, you know, summer camps mm -hmm. in Wellesley and Weston, right. and a mom says, oh, you know, I've researched this, and right. I'd like to write an article about it, and right. it's at, you know, it right. just kind of all works, works well out. together. So, um, you know, I would say just, just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of women, you know, who are home raising their kids mm -hmm. think, you know, as the kids get older, like, oh, right. You know, there's nothing for me right. to do. I've been home so long, and yeah. that is absolutely yeah. not true. Well, I find a lot of moms who started off in one career and then, after having children, find that they want to branch into a different career that's yeah. more compatible with their new lifestyles. Yeah. And so um, I know moms who'd rather um, start something in journalism or in the field of freelance writing, yeah. rather than going back to being a full-time 
um, whatever they were doing before. Right. Where they had right. more energy. Yeah. And yeah. Less and children. time. You know, right. with, with kids, it's hard right. if you had a job where you traveled right. all the time, and right. you know, it's not always it's not right. always possible. To and they and they that. and they feel stuck because they don't know like where to start or who to approach. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's that's interesting. That's well, interesting it's so advice. easy now too with um, vehicles like LinkedIn. Right. You know, you can put your uh, your resume. Right. You can put your interests on there. You can have right. people endorse you. And yeah. you know, it's it's amazing yeah. how you know I've people that I knew from years ago. Yeah. I've reconnected with through LinkedIn right. and, and Facebook. Right. And oh, you're doing that. Oh, right. well, you know what? I yeah. I actually have written some articles. Would right. you like to read them? Sure. Yeah. You know, it's that right. kind of a thing. Right. I think it's easier now than it ever has mm -hmm. been mm -hmm. to, you know, get get out there. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm going to ask you um, quickly if you'd like to um, share some interesting stories um, that you've had, um, experiences, stories that you may want to share, some unique um, situations or happenings um, while you've been at the magazine or, or previously? We've interviewed some really interesting people mm -hmm. and um, and we've also had some interesting photo shoots. Um, one that comes to mind a few years ago for fall issue we mm -hmm. did an article on haunted places mm -hmm. in Wellesley and Weston mm -hmm. and someone had told some stories about Henderson House mm -hmm. which is in Weston mm -hmm. being haunted and the photographer went over at dusk and right. he was photographing and he said he was, it just kind of felt creepy because right. you know he didn't see anything right. of course but and he, he did a beautiful photo shoot and then just a few weeks ago I got an email from a woman mm -hmm. in Connecticut or mm -hmm. something who had done a Google search mm -hmm. and had had t gone to Henderson House and taken pictures and claimed that she could see the ghost that we talked about in the article like oh, staring neat. out of the window oh, <laughs> so awesome. I didn't see it yeah. but anyway that was have, have you um, been up there to see it have you been up there at, at the house yourself yeah, I don't. Yeah, it seems so the verdict is it's normal. Perfect, yeah, yeah, but she was. I, I don't know yeah. if she was maybe one of those people who likes to hunt down. Yeah. you know, yeah. ghosts or whatever. So, that's, so that's that was a good interesting. Pastime. Certainly um, keeps it exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've we've interviewed um, you know famous people, not so famous uh -huh. people. I mean, there's so many interesting people in Wellesley and Weston. It's, there it's are amazing writers, mm -hmm. d doctors. Um, so in the in the last year, who's an interesting person that that you've interviewed um, um, that I sticks didn't out in your personally memory. interview him but um, Dr. Ehrlichman who was in mm -hmm. our rec most recent mm -hmm. issue um, is was a he's a very renowned plastic surgeon mm -hmm. and he's always donated his time to go to third world countries mm -hmm. and help children um, with cleft palates You're right and he decided at age 54 to join the National Guard mm -hmm. And he went to Afghanistan on active oh, nice. duty wow, and helped the, the people in the villages over there who yeah. were, you know, affected by the right. war and did some amazing work over yeah, there. I did not know he was a Wellesley local. And he's a Wellesley, wow. yeah. And I just think that's great. I mean, here's a man yeah. who's older and right. he could be out playing golf that's and instead true. he's, you know. In Afghanistan of all places, It just shows that right? there's, you know, you're never too old right. to, you know, to still, you know, make right. a difference. Not that 54 is old. No. no <laughs> but, right. um, but it's pretty old to join right. the, to join the army. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've inter interviewed um, Dr. Joseph Murray, who mm -hmm. just recently passed away. Mm -hmm. um, a fascinating man, nice, nice man. Um, so we've done, you know, sports stars. Mm -hmm. we've, we've, you know, um, we interviewed um, Ray Allen's wife, uh -huh. Shannon, um, and uh, she was doing a cooking show. Uh -huh. So we, we went and interviewed right. her. Um, so. I personally interviewed Candy O'Terry from uh -huh. Magic 105.7, right. who lives right. in Wellesley. Like um, oh, neat. Yeah, so right. there's just been a lot of, there's just a lot of really interesting So, are people. you allowed to give us a spoiler um, alert to what's upcoming for the spring issue? Like give oh. us a little hint of what, what we um, hope to see in the magazine? Sure, I can tell you, um, we're going to be interviewing um, Dr. Um, Dr. Deepak Chopra. Uh -huh. His brother uh -huh. um, lives in Weston, uh -huh. and he's also a doctor. Uh -huh. And he's written a book with his brother, mm -hmm. and it should be a really interesting article, yeah. a face-to-face -face article. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we're yeah. also doing, um, we're featuring an article on um, how to self-publish mm -hmm. your own your own book. Uh -huh. So that'll, I think a lot of people will find that interesting. interesting. Yeah. And a lot of people um, that we interviewed are local authors, right. and some right. who've who've met with an, a lot of success right. And, right. and will tell their stories. Awesome. And um, what else? We're, we're going to feature um, a kind of a, um, an interesting story on uh, people returning home from war. Mm -hmm. um, that will be very heartwarming. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Uh, 
practical article on managing menopause. <laughs> so, you know, we've kind of, yeah. we've got a lot. Covers the spectrum. We've covers covered the range. spectrum. And, and also a great article on school fairs uh -huh. um, because um, I don't know how long you've been in Wellesley, mm -hmm. but I know you have elementary school right. children mm -hmm. and the school fair is a huge deal. It's a big deal. And I think just about every right. school, um, public and private, right. we has try a to fair. hit them all. You try to yes, hit them all, hit, yeah. Try to hit them all. Try <laughs> is the operative word. I understand. <laughs> well, that's great. Thank you so much, Jill. It's oh, been you're such very a pleasure. welcome. It's a pleasure meeting you. And it's a pleasure to, being here. And hope to have you again soon. Back thank on you. The show. I would love to come back. Thank you. Thank you.